Good morning everybody. My name is Jody. My husband David John and I have a small farm in the Panhandle of North Idaho. These are stories and adventures, so welcome to Moose Flats Farm. As you see, we're, and from the title, we're in the kitchen. We're going to be pickling some peppers and green beans because they are in heavy production right now. So I'm going to go through the steps of getting these guys pickled. But let me show you what I got. So I've got this mixed bowl of spicy to hot peppers, my jalapenos, cayenne longs, and then all of these green beans. And I can't remember if I said earlier we're going to be doing the pickled green beans and then just pickled spicy peppers which are great for adding to David John's dip or for putting on sandwiches or just for munching on. Let's turn to the stove and we'll go through. I am going to be making in the big pot a triple batch of this recipe for the green beans and then a single batch for the peppers. Okay so this is really a simple uh, pickling mix. It's going to be three cups of white vinegar, three cups of water, Three tablespoons of canning pickling salt. Three. One tablespoon of peppercorns. And one tablespoon of pickling spices. <clears throat> and we'll just Turn the elements on and bring this up to temperature. Whoa, don't lose it in the pot. So we'll bring this up to a boil and let it simmer for about five minutes. And then we'll, on the big one, we'll add the green beans, bring it back up to a boil, and I'll show you that when we get to that point, and then take them off and head up to the seed shed to get these guys processed. Okay, so the vinegar mixture has come up to a boil. I let it go down to a simmer been about five minutes or so and in that time I julienned up the all the peppers so they'll be ready to go in when it's time but now we're gonna add the green beans to the big pot bring it to a boil turn it off so we'll be ready to go up to the seed shed and this is about 13 pounds of green beans And that's just one bowl. Hopefully we've got enough. Okay, so I'm going to take this single batch added in here because I still have the other pot of green beans to add. And I'll just make another batch of this for the peppers. So 
So the green beans have just about come up to a boil. Gonna take them off the heat and take them up to the seed shed. The second batch of single batch of brine is just about done. So gonna get everything collected and we'll move up to the seed shed and show you how I'm gonna make the spicy and yes I said spicy hence the reason the jalapenos were in their own bowl spicy pickled green beans okay so I've pulled the jars out of the canner so they're nice and hot now we're gonna go through the assembly line of filling the first eight jars so it's just these ones right here are eight hot jars and this is the cool tool I was trying to find last time we were canning because it gives you the measurements for adjusting for headspace and on this one we want about a half an inch so it's just like the other one it's basically on a cool jar right there is where you want to stop having it filled so we're going to start with put in some thin layer of the sliced jalapenos on the bottom and I did this last year when I pressure canned the green beans just add a little jalapeno to them for just dinner beans oh my gosh they are just have a little bit of heat and just really good to eat and then on these ones and that was pretty good I'm just going to add a cayenne long, I don't need two in there, one in each one. And the recipe calls for garlic to go in. I'm going to use some of the chopped up garlic scapes just to get that garlicky flavor in there. And these I'm not really measuring, I'm just doing a small pinch in the bottom and now comes the fun of getting the green beans in more of in the way that looks pretty good yeah that helps Go through, give everyone a pat on the bottom. Add a little more of it.
Okay, those look good. And now we'll just carefully pour the brine over them. And then we'll just use this tool to go through along the sides just to remove any possible air, air gaps in them. And then add liquid if needed to get our half inch head space. Oh, totally missed that one. And before I top these off, I am going to be adding the pickle crisp granule. It's about an eighth of a teaspoon. And then we have our lids in hot water, so we'll to soften the, the wax on the rings. Oops, forgot a step. You want to make sure to go around and wipe the rims. just so that you make sure you get a very good seal. Now we'll put the rings on, rings and bands on. Snug and then finger tight. So I just put them in the canner, they'll let it come up to a boil and then the processing time is 10 minutes. So back to you guys in just a sec when these guys are ready to come out and we'll start another round. Okay, so it's been processing for 10 minutes so what we'll do now is we'll turn the propane off. Take the lid off and let them cool for about five minutes and then we'll come back and get the next batch going. 
So I did, as you see, while those were processing, go through and get the rest of these done. I did do four of them that are not spicy and I just have them flipped over so the heat of them are keeping the, the rings hot. And so part of the purpose of when we were down at the house and I put the green beans in and brought them up to a boil is it's called blanching. It's supposed to preserve some of the color and make keep them crisper. So that's what, what I did. With the leftover and that process of canning is called hot pack. So everything was basically hot when it went in and goes into the canner hot. The next thing we're going to be doing is this colorful bowl of we're going to do the pickled peppers and I did add the rest of the jalapenos and the few garlic scapes that I had left in here and have them mixed. These are going to be done as what's called raw pack. So we'll be just doing them in the we'll be doing them in the little half pint jars. And I can't remember how many can fit in the canner, so once we get that pulled out, we'll see how much a batch makes see how far these go so it's been the five minutes now we're going to be taking our jars out and i did do a newbie mistake i kind of over tightened some of the jars and i'll show you what it does to the lids shouldn't really affect the canning but we'll definitely be using those first so let me grab my tongs and we'll be right back And there you can see the jalapenos have been kind of cooked down and you see I've got a nice smooth lid. That's what you want. And if, I don't know if you can see on this one like right here right there it's bubbled and that's just because I over tighten the lids a little Okay, we're gonna get this guy lid back on and get it relit. And let it come back up to a boil and we'll have another set done. And I only wound up with this little tiny bit of the green beans left and they taste good this way also. Okay, I've gone, these guys have been through a quick rinse in the dishwasher just to get them sanitized. And because I am going to be working with raw peppers and pepper oil is not anything fun to play with, especially if you accidentally rub your eyes. I know. I did these peppers without the gloves on, but I'm really going to be handling a lot of peppers. And I should have probably had gloves on. So just like last time, we're going to take and we're going to just fill up to about the half inch headspace mark, just like that one there, just lightly packed. Go through and get these all filled and then we'll put the pickling juice on them.
That looks pretty good. Now we'll just fill them up. Okay, so now all I got to do is go down and get oh my, this, that one. some boiling water in here to melt the wax and get the rims wiped off. And these guys will be ready to go in after we're done with the green beans. Okay, so I've gone through, love the microwave, heated a bowl of water to soften the wax on the lids. So now these guys are ready to go into the counter once these ones are processed. To be honest, you'll find that once you get into canning, especially the way that I'm doing it, that I'm up here in the seed shed and not at the house, and I don't really want to leave that propane unattended just because I don't want to lose everything, is the waiting for the water to boil. A watched pot never boils. But second round is in, or third round is in, almost back up to a boil. And then I figure after we get this all done, we'll just go take a look at the birds. I did put them out on the clover this morning. And they, it was about that tall, about six inches tall. And they pretty much mowed it back down, so the clover only lasts them one day. Okay, gonna put the pickled peppers in. And there's definitely a good, because you want to have an inch of water over the top of the jars, a good inch above them. And because they are cold packed, it's going to take a little while for that to come up to a boil. So let's go check on the birds. But first, I did get some brassicas started. Kind of spotty on the germination. But there's the pickled jalapeno green beans. garden in the afternoon shade. But I did down here where the roses are by the arbor. Somehow in this bed I got a red and a white. Got a peach in the back. I'm not sure what color that one is but a red and a white. Kind of like I planned it. Over here, I got two whites, a mystery one, and a tangerine one, and then two white ones. And I was just guessing at what colors I was putting in 
clover area, like I said this morning, was about six inches tall and has now been pretty much mowed down. Got some ducks and chickens seeking refuge from the sun under the trees. Like you got a clump right there under the knotweed. And that's one of the things I miss about them having complete access to this area is the birds did use the trees for shade in the heat of the summer. Here comes the goof troop. And I've slowly but steadily been working my way through the boards. But let's check on the babies in here. And they're getting big, starting to get feathered out. Still don't know boys from girls, but they're cute. And I did the other day, went through and pulled a bunch of the birds that were on nests just because I'm done having babies this year. I say that and I ordered another batch of chicks. Yeah. But then a couple minutes later, I was out feeding them and was like, let me see if I can grab it. Look down and in amongst a bunch of baby ducklings that just hatched was this little Orloff chick. So she got brought into, the, she or he got, knowing my luck, a he, got brought into the brooder. But it's definitely a little warm in here, as you see on this one Orloff chick. Doesn't have any feathers on its chest, so gonna have to figure out getting a fan in here just to move some air around for him. But this is the oldest of the nature hatch chicks. And then I've got an escapee. But there's you see. The geese are out on the clover. And I do have... Ooh, I need to get some of these picked. Tomatoes ripening in there. Those are early girl tomatoes and should be relatively easy to get to. Ooh, I've got lots of tomatoes blushing. Looks like you can see them right in there. Got an Amish paste in there. But because it's been so hot, the every form of water vessel I own that's for the birds has, or even not for the birds, has been brought out. I need to go around and refill everything. And yeah, it's a kind of muddy mess by the raspberries because I did sprink or did water them heavily today. But got a clump of babies there. A little water dish. Muddy mess. Ah, a group of goslings. 
in that old roasting pan. And even the sled has been brought into use. There's a baby on one of his big brothers. But let's look at where the bird hoop houses are going to be. And you can kind of see here, we've got the line out of the green stakes. That's where the front's going to be. So you'll have one here. It goes about back to where that board, big board is. And yes, we put a gate in for access out to there. And we decided to go six feet between them. So next year that will be full of my pumpkins and in the winter it will be full of snow and then he's got one side just kind of temporarily braced up so we can kind of see what the effect is and we will be going through and on the sides attaching that pile of metal and we're not going to be covering them with greenhouse plastic. He actually got a good deal at work on some reinforced opaque uh, tarps, which that's what we're going to use to cover these hoop houses with. Look at the birds all trying to find shelter in some sort of, sort of shade. <clears throat> and as far as the hawk or the whatever type of falcon it is, I think it's a red tail. David John doesn't, so not sure what type it is. It still flies by, but Bob is helping and the babies have learned to stay on the edges of the barnyard. Don't be out in the open. Okay, so it's been five minutes. And there, I've got a jar of beautifully pickled peppers. And there, I've just got the... <clears throat> and there, I've just got the peppers sitting out, cooling down. Well, this is where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you have a good day and a good week. I've got to go down to the house and clean up my canning mess. And we'll be back with you guys for the next adventure. Bye for now. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button.